be the best the better choice for him. Uh, so we'll see what happens. And I reckon we're probably ready to go into the next game. Indeed. Let's uh, let's go. All right. Game number two of the finals: Technics versus Eozer. And here we are in game number two on electric circuit. Ooh, a bit of a probe uh, snafu there. Yeah. I think that probe is slightly late on mining, but that's all good. Uh, so anyway, Technics is going to be Protoss once again. He's the red Protoss at the top left. And uh, Eon Zerg, the purple Zerg at the bottom left. I almost thought he was five pulling for a second until he built a six drone. And I was like, oh my god, there's three larvae there. There's three larvae there. What's going on? <laughs> Whew. Close to, uh, well, only in your mind, not in reality, but, you know, that, that's just as good since you're the one bringing the information to the people. And by the way, snafu, what a great word. I'm going to make more effort to use that in my everyday <laughs> life. Very happy you brought that up for me. Dude, there, there's actually a board game called snafu. Did you know that? Really? See, that, that's how I first learned that word is because, I don't know, like, I think my mom randomly found this board game in some shop or something, and it was called snafu. And it, it was it's like... Um, it was one of those games where like you have uh, like a little metal ball and you try and move it through all the <laughs> random obstacles and things. Yep. Yeah. It was like one of those things. So yeah, I had a lot of fun when I was a kid. I was like, and I learned a new word. Yeah. It, brilliant. That's that's the double whammy. That's probably why she bought it for you. It's fun and educational. So exactly. you're winning, aren't you? Brilliant. You know what board game I love? The StarCraft board game. <laughs> I'm not even joking. I play that. I was wondering. I was like. Is he really going to go there, the StarCraft <laughs> board game? I went oh, there. Man. And you know what? Not just a StarCraft board game. got the expansion as well because I'm, I'm actually just <laughs> that awesome. <laughs> Dude, hell <okay. laughs> how, how do you actually play that? By the, I, I've been curious, actually. How do you play that oh. game? It's, it's so complicated. I mean, it's awesome once you get the hang of it, but <laughs> there's so many complex mechanics in it in terms of what you'd expect from a board game. It's not just like Monopoly or some shit. It's, it's intense and it's hey, strategic. Dude. It's a brood war game, all right? You gotta have mechanics in there. I know, you, I know. You, you gotta be playing that board game with 500 APM, dude. You have, and yeah, it takes like an hour to get a single turn down, so you have to think so ridiculously hard about everything you do. Anyway, it's awesome. Yeah, I can recommend it. Oh man, that's fantastic. All right, I'll have to go visit Elegant sometime and play StarCraft the board game with him. Damn right. Anyway, I'll bring like Poetic the, uh... over here. The probe has now uh, has now scouted Eon Zerg's base. It was just a uh, 12 hatch this time, so no crazy 9 pull shenanigans. Uh, we did have a forge first though from Technic since he initially scouted the wrong way to the top right. So um, that's slightly unfortunate for him. When you see a Zerg going for 12 hatch, you can actually go Nexus first, but obviously if you don't scout it in time, then you just have to go for the forge for safety. And and that's absolutely fine. You know, you're not really behind or anything. It's just um, you know the the most efficient thing you could have done would be to have gone Nexus first. But this is okay. Yeah. And he was at least able to not make cannons because it's the worst when you when you've made a cannon and then yes. you see that there's twelve hatch and you say, "Oh, I'm already behind. This is ridiculous." But uh, he seems to have timed it well enough, so uh, no extra cannons for him. Uh, but he's now making up his gateway before his first cannon, so he's able to kind of, you know, kind of get economically level and cut the corners where he feels he can. Um, and still, okay, only two zirkins in the pipeline, so it just kind of forces that cannon to be necessary, but no more than that. So they, these guys are going to be progressing very, very slowly, uh, very, very normally into the mid game. Nothing cheesy as of yet for Eon, but oh, I thought that Hydrus at the front was about to make a Hydrus. That, that drone at the front was about to make a Hydrus. <laughs> Sorry, must have made about 3,000 people wet themselves a little bit right there. The thought of Hydrus already, but no, no, no. Um, slight blip. That's all right. That's all right. Anyway, it looks like the probe is being chased by the Zerglings. Should be OK, <clears> though. <throat> She managed to escape just two Zerglings. By the way, I, I want to point out, compare this wall to the wall last game on Jade. I mean, like, look how how much more open this is and how many more gaps there are on this wall. I mean, this is not nearly as nice and tight um, as the one on Jade. And and you know what? It's it's definitely not Technics' fault. I mean, I'm a Protoss player, and I don't really know how to wall this map. I mean, just the way, like, with the diagonal walls and stuff, and it's just it's really wonky. Um, 
in Brood War, like, diagonal lines are, are the worst. You can just never figure out where you can put buildings. It's terrible. I'm sure Elegant yeah. knows. Oh god, do I know. So many times I've had crappy, horrible, ineffective wallings cave in on my head. <laughs> Tons of zergling streaming through. It's it's hideous. I feel your pain. But yeah, because just because of the way kind of the game engine works, it's impossible to know unless you already know whether your walling is good or not just exactly. by looking at it. Um, we've got the zealots wandering over to Eonzerg's side of the map. You can actually do a kind of little bit of a slow zealot run by action right here, all the way into the main. One zealot getting through quite significantly damaged, but well. Um, kind of a third of its health still less so it might be able to have a hack at a couple of drones managing to ooh, get two out of three hits on one drone uh, but he's just gonna have to keep that alive for a while and if nothing else getting him some very valuable scouting information um, and very crucially i think technics is going for the same build as last game where he's going for a bunch of plus one speed lots and this overlord i don't think saw the citadel i think it was barely <coughs> out of range wow two drones going down very very nice but uh, but yes, so I, I don't think Eonzerg knows what, what the build is. There we go, there are the additional gateways. I'd expect another gateway to go down here, four gate speed lot. And come on, Pro, make a gateway, make a gateway. Do it. Yeah. yeah there we go. By the I way, thought. just now when you said um, uh, your wallens caved in on your head, I totally imagined, I was like, not only do the Zerglings run through Elegance walls, but the buildings themselves like fall onto his <laughs> cannons and kill his own cannons because of how terrible the wall is. <laughs> uh, I was just like, wow, that's a pretty bad wall. You can imagine the Lings running through and the walls like collapsing behind them. It's just epic. Oh, dude, it's, yeah, it's like Indiana Jones escaping a temple. Except yeah. Except like actually going into the Protoss base. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, that's actually what it's like when you see me play PvZ. All right, so two more hatches going down here straight away after the uh, spires on the way. Because the second hatch is finished, I think Eon's actually going for uh, Mutalisks here, which is going to be quite bad for Technics, who has gone for just speed lots and will not really have any anti-air to deal with this. He is banking some gas, so eventually he can throw down a Templar Archives and build some Archons to help deal with that. But he's going to be in some trouble. And there we go, the mute is coming out from the eggs. Uh, Eons are making a mistake, though. Only mining uh, with one guy on the natural gas. I'm pretty sure that's not on purpose. Nope. Although, no, I'm pretty sure that's a mistake. Although he does have spare gas in the bank. Yeah, he's well, that's, not that's all why I'm wondering. Out. Like, is that actually on purpose? But, but the thing is, if you wanted to do that, I think it's more efficient to place two and two instead of three and one. If that makes sense? So two guys yeah, on main, I think so. two guys on natural. Uh, I think you get more gas that way for the same drone expenditure, so mm. I'm going to assume right. that's a blunder. I would, I would think so, but uh, looking like we do actually have the Zealous timing attack coming in here, I don't think it's going to be too effective because the mutes are out, but uh, the one advantage to this being that it forces the mutes to defend rather than to attack, and of course right now, if the Eonzerg were to attack, Technics would have nothing to say, so those ze Zealots, while they look a little bit ineffective, are actually doing a pretty valuable cause, uh, but a couple of them do get into the main, so they're going to be able to nab one or two drone kills, but more coming into the front right now, going to keep the pressure on, uh, and as I already mentioned, this is very valuable, it allows Technics that necessary time to actually build some proper stuff, but he is way behind in tech right now, um, so these zealots at least need to do some kind of economic damage in order to give him some decent positioning in this game. He's managing to catch the odd drone here and there, but it's probably not going to be enough, and he has lost a significant number of zealots already, um, and now, now those mutants are probably going to be able to divert and actually be able to do some harassment. For some reason, Technics didn't get plus one with this attack. That's very strange. So, I mean, his, his zealots had no upgrades there. Normally when you do this, you go for plus one and speed. I guess he wanted to do a slightly earlier timing with no plus one, but, I mean, he's done very little damage considering you know how much tech he sacrificed to do this right now he's just building emergency cannons in his main base to try and survive this building double stargates as a follow-up it's quite interesting actually because um this is actually a uh, quite a popular build uh that for a build that kid canada actually quite likes to do uh also known as draw pretty high level protoss in the foreign scene right now um yep and uh, high level dodging and, and he, he 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 likes to do this kind of you know speed lot attack into a uh, into two stargate corsairs but uh in this case the zealot attack just i think did too little damage and the stargates are too late to be effective so i don't really think this is gonna do too well here against eon zerg mm. i don't i don't think so either i i, I suspiciously feel like this is um technics one build somehow um, which worries me a little bit. I don't. I don't know that he's got too much else under under his build order belt, so to speak. He has got the double stargates working now, but is that, he's only actually working with one of them. So okay, now he's working with two of them. But the corsairs will come quite thick and fast, so he will at least have time to get a third up and running. But 
I mean, Eon's Ogre is going to have quite some freedom over the map for a while. Although he is, he did weirdly get supply blocked briefly there, but I don't think that's going to matter too much. And soon he'll be able to burst out and just make sure he can contain his opponent for quite some time, I think. See, the big problem is, is that even if he does get Corsairs and kind of, you know, uh, holds back the Titan Mutalisks, which there is actually not that many of, um, no. he has nothing to deal with Hydralisks. His Robo is, you know, almost finished. He's got no Templar Archives. I mean, he basically needs either Storm or Reavers right now, and he's not anywhere near either one. No, so... he hasn't even got plus one. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, if, if a Hydra Bust came right now, I mean, what does he actually do? He's got, like, seven speed logs, and that's it. No, with no upgrades. It's just like, oh, oh man. Why hasn't he got plus one? Why isn't he at least making plus one? I, I'd have thought you'd have had that ages ago. He was going for such a zealot heavy opening, and the plus one gives you such a significant advantage. I, I can't explain the lack of the lack of plus one ground weapons. Really can't. Um, I think why well, he's not even researching it now. Um, but a lot of hydras coming at his front door, and he's just having to make cannons, which at ten minutes into the game is is, is really a pretty horrible thing to have to be doing. The corsairs look like ooh, they're going to be able to catch pretty much all of the mutants right here. The mutants have decided to stand and fight. They're all going to go down. But meanwhile, all the hydras are coming in through the front door, and there are not enough cannons up yet to deal with this. But there may just be enough zealots for now. Um, but they're going to have to pull back and going to have to try and stay alive in order to support some sort of decent wall in front of these cannons. Oh man, the Reaver just started. He needs the Reaver to be just finishing, not starting right now. But Absolutely. however, there are a few more cannons making. He's making more in the back. The wall is very wonky. Notice, it's just his wall was quite close to his natural nexus, so there's not really that much space to actually make cannons. It's just, it's, it's really mainly an artifact of this map, which is not very friendly to Protoss walls uh, against Zerg. However, if this Reaver can come out, though, we did see earlier how... Uh, in the, you know, in the same fashion, the architecture kind of works against the Zerg Hydralisks trying to kind of run in and snipe the uh, the Reavers. I'm not sure why these Hydras are dancing back and forth uh, just now, but anyway. Uh, we do have a fourth base here at the 9 o'clock. Interesting that uh, Yantar is actually kind of expanding towards the Protoss right now. Generally, that's considered uh, <laughs> not the wisest move, but in this case, I don't think it matters too much. He's putting so much pressure on the Protoss. However, the first Reaver's out. Oh, but it spawned on the wrong side, though! Oh, no! It spawned on the inside, which means that it can't actually shoot any of the Hydralisks unless they run really far in. Look at this, he's trying to stack his probes to move aside so the Reaver can get some shots off. It is finally getting some shots off. Of course, Reavers do actually have pretty uh, pretty good range here, but man, that is really funny. That actually reminds me of a Pro League game where uh, I think Harangi actually lost the game because he, he placed his Robo poorly and his Reaver got stuck in some buildings or something. It was really funny. Uh, we, j j just a point. We don't remember games where Harangi lost. No, no one ever. <laughs> so those fall into it. Point. Yeah, into obscurity. But this Reaver is going to have to do its absolute damnedest to keep things going. But it looks like it's actually just going to manage because it is doing some heavy, heavy damage uh, against these Hydras. And hopefully, once that forge is rebuilt, um, Technics will actually remember to get plus one ground weapons because it's actually pretty important. And I'm quite surprised to see that he hasn't got a third running yet either, which is which is quite interesting. I'd have thought he'd have found time to do that as well. Um, but <laughs> yeah, while while Technics is still alive, he's in a rough rough spot and as you say Eon Zerg is so confident right now that he's actually expanding directly towards his opponent which is um, a little bit of an odd, odd thing to be doing in any situation. However uh, a nice little break for, for Technics is that his courses have managed to supply block Eon Zerg. Eon Zerg now at 78 of 70 supply so unable to actually continue the flood of Hydralisks and even if he was able to I don't think it would make much difference in the face of these two Reavers now in the natural quite secure here uh, kind of tucked away behind the Nexus. Uh, even the probes would be able to be pulled against hydras if they tried to run in and snipe it. So, uh, so that's not too bad. There's actually two probes fighting Whoa. a hydras in the middle of the map. What the? Wait, they're just going to the Zerg base. They're gonna they're chase amazing. these drones. They're what amazing. is going on? That's sick. They're, they're on a mission right now. Those are absolute Rambo probes. Oh, oh, they're going home. They're going home. They made it halfway across the map, though, so, so big congratulations to them. Um, <laughs> but there's another wave of Hydralisks coming right now, so I think those probes are going to have to run home just as quickly as possible. Um, a small strike force of Zealots going out now as well. There are four Zealots there. They may just be able to sneak around um, the oncoming Hydralisk cords, but once again, it's going to be a defensive job entirely for Technics. I think he should leave at least one Reaver behind. He's loading both of them up into his shuttle. I don't know if that's a good idea. Does the shuttle even have speed? Did you see? Um, I didn't see, but I highly doubt it though, because uh, the speed upgrade for a shuttle is quite expensive, and he's been yeah. on two base for this whole game, so I'd be quite surprised if he was able to finish that already, uh, considering he had to build all his emergency defenses as well. He's finally getting his third of the mineral only, but um, at this point, I mean, the Zerg's already mining happily on four bases here. Uh, if he can do some amazing harassment with these Reavers, that might get him back into it. 
And in fact, because the Zerg expanded towards him here, this is a really easily harassable base for these Reavers. I mean, a nice big impassable uh, area here for the Hydralisks. He can just keep harassing back and forth over this uh, little wall thingy. And uh, yeah, that'll be quite good. Oops, like a bunch of lag here for some reason. Oh, wait, what? Oh. One of the Reavers goes down. What? How? Why did that even happen? I don't know. The techniques managed to pretty much no harassment. I don't even know if he can survive here against the oncoming Hydras without Reaver support. He needs Reavers back in his mouth right now. And with only one left, I don't know there's going to be enough anyway. Uh, sorry about the touch of lag right here, guys, but I'm not quite sure why that's happening. Technic having to defend right to the hill, but I don't think he's got the units at all. Eon Zerg just coming in. A huge number of units spread out. The Reaver does make it back and gets instantly sniped off. Um, so Eon Zerg is going to be able to bust his way right the way in. Um, yeah, and I think Technics is going to be toast in this game. It looks like Eon Zerg is going to take it. There's a lot of Corsairs moving into um, Eon Zerg's main, but there's only so much they can do. They are not uh, magic. Yeah, this is basically game over for uh, for Technics here. I mean, a valiant effort playing his off-race as Protoss, but is going to get taken down here by these Hydras. He's trying to do some last-ditch harassment with the Corsairs, but GG from Technics. GG. Eon Zerg takes the final series 2-0 and will be the champion of our first qualifier here for the TLS. Congratulations to him. Both Eon Zerg and Technics have qualified now for the TLS proper. They no longer need to play any more qualifiers. Uh, they're both in the, the round of 24. Uh, but Eon Zerg, of course, has the lovely advantage of getting to pick uh, his group. So... Yeah. yeah, congrats to, to to both players and to him especially. Huge thanks to our sponsors, Razer and Twitch. Uh, without them, of course, none of this would be possible. And of course, huge thanks to all of the uh, many organizers, referees, graphic artists, etc., who make this possible. Of course, uh, oftentimes with these things, you know, the casters get the glory, but there are many, many people behind the scenes making this happen. A surprising number, in fact. Yeah, I didn't realize how hard it was to actually run a tournament. So, uh, so yeah, many thanks to all of them. And uh, thank you to my lovely co-caster, Elegant. Oh, absolutely my pleasure. This is fantastic event. I'm so happy to be casting this. Absolutely incredible. And, uh, of course, thanks to all the viewers for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. And uh, I hope if you were maybe new to new to StarCraft 1, new to Brood Ore coming into this, I hope you've... Uh, liked what you've seen and maybe we'll tune into the rest of uh, our casts um, we will have one tomorrow straight away so you won't have to wait long there will be the second qualifier tomorrow at the same time um, so i think the games will start at 5 p.m gmt and then the cast will start uh, three hours later so exactly the same schedule as today and of course elegant and i will be casting that as well yes so uh yeah if you if you want to play in this do sign up if you just want to watch, then tune into the cast. And I think that will be all. Yeah, I think we're all good. So yeah, thank you very much, for guys, for watching. Hope to see all 3,000 of you back here tomorrow. This has been a great start to this event, and thank you very much for tuning in. Indeed. All right, see you guys tomorrow.